All right, so we're going to talk about section 6.3 today, definite integrals and antiderivatives. Some of this we've kind of already talked about a little bit, but we'll just kind of formalize it a little more. So your textbook gives rules for working with integrals, the most important of which are. Um, this first one says reversing the limits changes the sign. So notice here we're doing the integral from A to B, and here they sw switched it, the integral from B to A. So that will have the effect of changing the sign of that value. So sometimes it's just convenient to do that. Um, the second one, if the upper and lower limits are equal, then the integral is zero. So if you think about what this is implying, if you are finding the area under the curve, but you're just going from A to A, which means you're not going anywhere, um, you just, you don't have any area under the curve, so it would be zero. The third one, if you have an integral that has a constant times a function, you can actually pull the constant outside of the integral. Um, if you have a, a constant multiple, you can move it outside. We saw this same thing with derivatives, where if you had a constant, you can pull that out front. Same thing holds true for integrals. The next one, integrals can be added and subtracted. So if you are doing the integral from a to b of f of x plus g of x dx, you can actually split it apart into two separate integrals and evaluate them separately. Also, intervals can be added or subtracted. So this one, notice, was two separate functions. This is the same function, but here we're going from A to B, and then we're going from B to C. So you have these two different regions that you can kind of smush together, and it's equal to the um, integral from A to C. So with that, for example, here, suppose this was f of x, and we integrate from A to B, so that would be the area represented. And then we integrate from B to C, so you can see how that is equal to the integral from A to C. The average value of a function is the value that would give the same area if the function was a constant. So for example, if we had y equals 1 half x squared, well, if we wanted to integrate from 0 to 3, because that's what we are seeing here, from 0 to 3, of 1 half x squared dx to find the area, then we're going to take the um, antiderivative. Remember, we um, increase the power by 1 and divide by that new power, so we would get 1 6 x cubed. And we're going to plug in a 3, plug in a 0, and you get 27 over 6, or 9 halves, or 4.5. And then we're going to take that and divide by 3 because um, our, we, we're going from 0 to 3. So we get an average value of 1.5. So if you were to change this, like, so if I were to take all this area that's in yellow and just kind of smash it down, it would fit inside this rectangle. So that's the average value of a function. And that's pretty important. We're going to see this um, come up. So we have this formula for the average value of a function. You take the area, which is the integral, and you divide by the width. So you're going to see this formula in some examples that I do, um, but that is the formula for the average value of the function. Another thing that's important is the mean value theorem for definite integrals, which says that for a continuous function, at some point on the interval, the actual value will equal will be equal, it should say, to the average value. So we saw this. We had a mean value theorem for um, derivatives as well that said for some, you know, if, um, on a, on a continue, for a continuous function and on a um, closed interval, there had to be some point where the um, average rate of change was equal to the instantaneous rate of change. Well, this is the same kind of deal, except this is for integrals. So there does have to be some place that where the actual value is equal to the average value of the function. So it looks like this. Um, if f is continuous on a closed interval, then at some point c within that closed interval, this has to hold true. And we're going to see some examples of um, how to use the mean value theorem. So that's kind of it for the material. I'm going to do another video of some examples.